I mean, despite the hostility that we've seen a little bit of because of having a camera, there is something really quite relaxing about being here, really quite familiar about being here. Every, everybody and everything is, is familiar. It's redolent of going back in time over, over 30 years to sort of childhood holidays in Charmouth. And I think for people that are 20 years or so younger than me, I, I wonder if they've ever really experienced a lot of them, anything like this, of just being in a place that is, is totally English, that hasn't, when you are English, when you just totally know how to behave, totally know how to get these people, you, you, they get you. The, uh, you know, it's like that Rudyard Kipling poem, The Stranger, uh, the, the, the men of my own stock, bitter bad they may be, but at least they hear the things I hear and see the things I see. And it's like that. And there's just this, this sense that every, you just know what's going on. And it's very relaxing. And I can, I'm beginning to understand why people sort of go a holiday to the countryside or whatever, to these kinds of places, these outposts, these obituaries of England. That's what this is. But it's, there are rich obituaries of England, like I know, Oxfordshire and Cotswolds and these kinds of places, and uh, you know, Cornwall. And then there's these, these ones, which is a very, it's a poignant one, because it's, you can see from how people are dressed, uh, particularly, uh, and the level of health. Uh, the poverty here and all of the, all that correlates with that, which is low IQ, which is low general factor of personality, uh, and, and which is just poor genetic health, and it all bundles together. And everybody that is not like that has basically left. There's no gentrification here, and so it's just all that is left is uh, people with those with that pathology, uh, and it's very very clear just walking around. So where are you from, Steve? I'm originally from Hertfordshire, Chesant. I'm now living in Mar Martello Caravan Park, at, under duress, by the way, um, due to my landlord put me there. So how, what, why, why are you under duress in this caravan park? Well, I was basically left there and told you're on your own. Uh, how so? Oh, well, he lives up in Turret House and I live down in Martello and all my addresses here are for Turret House. Right. So my post comes pony under underneath the caravan okay so no and i'm fed up with this they sanctioned me for going down to harlow to pick up my meds i'm hiv positive and happy about it to other people that aren't but why are you happy to be hiv positive i'm not you just, I'm sorry, i didn't hear i must, must no, have what you said i'm hiv positive it's other people that aren't all right they're okay. not happy not me all right okay and this this lot have just sanctioned me 250 pound because I didn't come to an appointment. I also had an appointment with a consultant in Harlow because there's no sexual health in Clacton. So I had to go and pick them up. Right, okay. And they said that's not a valid excuse. So they sanctioned me 250 pound, left me 84 pound to live on. For how long? Two, three weeks. Oh God, okay. And now they're not willing to help me at all. And uh, what, what, so what did you, um, how long have you been living out of, in, in Essex in this? I've been living in Essex for 26 years, but not here, Harlow. Uh, I've been back to Hertfordshire, and now I'm up here. How have you noticed it change in that time? Terribly. How so? Well, everything's too expensive now, especially if you're on universal credit. They don't give you enough money to live on, not alone pay for food. Um, I try and find food banks. Food bank here is run by the Sally Army. No disrespect to Sally Army, they never open. I got a voucher that's now out of date, right. so I can't, still can't get food. And uh, what did you used to do before you were out of work? I used to be a pro. I used to write systems for engineers. Right. I used to be a programmer. So what, what went? What went? Uh, what went wrong? I got HIV. And my father, who owned the company, was a homophobe. Okay. And I'm not gay. I'm as straight as they come, and I caught it from a woman. Oh, OK. Isn't it, isn't it, I don't know, I'm afraid I don't know that much about it. Isn't it is, there's quite a lot they can do now these well, days. it's under control, but because it's under control, DWP decided to not call it an illness, which it is. Um, they call it a condition, so I don't get the higher benefits. Okay. So it's all a con. So how long have you had HIV? 28 years. I was given a year 28 years ago. Oh, so you, you've, it's, uh, you've, you've, you've struggled through pretty well. Oh, you, well, not well, but... Um, you know, I've got to ring all these bloody numbers now. You know, they, they think you've got enough credit. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know how I'm supposed to afford all this. So what do you, I mean, if you've got 84 pounds for the next couple of weeks, what kind of thing do you eat? To, what do you cook? Crap. What kind of stuff? 
ping mills, microwave mills. That's all I can afford. So you don't, don't cook? Oh, no, I've got to cook, but um, I can't really talk about it here at the minute. All right, okay. He comes well, around and cooks me a decent meal every now and again. Is it every now and again? Who does? A friend of mine. Oh, okay. All right, well, thank you for talking to us. Uh, no best of luck with sorting this stuff out. Yeah, I've got to try and ring this now, try and get hardship payment. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. And, yeah, it's, it is hard in Clacton. Obviously, everyone's rising the prices of everything and everyone's getting less money. So okay. it is really hard. Um, like, even down to, like, little things, nappies, yeah. food, drinks, everything. It's just, it's becoming too much, really. And are you, are you the same fit for you? Basically, yeah, and I'm quite older now. I mean, I'm 46, and it's, just, it's, it's literally embarrassing, not just for me. There's people around here that's literally, you know, 78 years of age, and they've got nothing. It's, I don't know what's caused it or how it's going to stop or what we're going to do. I mean, and you know, that even to the last pound you've got, you don't know if you have to keep that for yourself or to give it to someone else because they, they're worse off than so have you. Have you got family that are, you think no, struggling more than no, you? We're, we're no, 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 it's family. just me and my mum. Yeah, um, my family's deceased. Um, my brother's in hospital, so it's just literally us two. And, and my kids, so. Um, you've got two, the two kids. Ha, ha. Um, my youngest one has autism, and obviously I've got my three year old. And even down to that, like, Go into the play area. It's expensive to take I've them to the play area. Been in here for a food parcel. So obviously, I've just moved back down here. Um, I'm struggling with this, that, and the other. And the food banks are not even opening as much as they was anymore because there's so many people queuing up for them. You know, we have to wait till Friday now. So what we're going to do? For, for what? For food? For food banks. Yeah. You know, there's different times and places. Obviously, it's they give you an hour and a half to get down there. Thursday. On Tuesdays, Thursdays, you have an hour and a half to get down there between nine and half eleven. Right. And, then... and on Friday, it's the same. It's two till half three. So you get an hour and a half to get down there. And it's even that trying to get a food parcel. But what would you normally? cook for dinner the thought anything pastas shepherd's pies any, everything just literally beans on toast some nights you know as long as the babies have eaten my little girl's gone without i don't really bother about myself obviously i'm under one but my little girl she's had to go without just to feed the baby just smoke no 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 every now and then yeah if i can afford it smoke. then yeah i can but if not so what what, I mean, what what have you before you uh, take it you're both unemployed yeah, yeah i'm yeah, yeah i'm a full-time carer for my daughter yeah. What did you do before? I was a carer. I worked in care homes. I've done also some jack of all trades, me, uh, retail, cleaning. So have you, have you lived in around here all your life? I've lived here for the last ten years. And you've born and bred in East born London. Born and bred in East yeah, London, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, oh, which yeah, bit? Yeah. Uh, born and bred in East Ham. East Ham. And then, so how long have you been? And so how long have you come? How long have you been in Claxton? Oh, literally, me just now. We're quite about a month now. So, but you. Just, I've lived here for years. So um, have you live with your dad here? No, no. I'm I'm 26. <laughs> I live on my own. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just more. This is meant to be the cheapest place in Essex to live, mm. and it's not. It's and really there's not. fights as well at the food banks. We see fights all the time. You know, so, so in the time you've lived here, how have you noticed it's changed here? Oh, it's just everything. It's gone downhill. There's nothing for the kids to do. Shops are shut in. Shops are shut in. Every yeah, other one shop will open within a month. It'll be shut, and something else will be getting in there. It's not houses anymore. The rent's going up. So, in your in your time in London, how did you how do you feel it's changed? Too many fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Straight on oh, the camera. Stop beating around the bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to the point. What's the matter with you? Oh, I, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't London anymore. It ain't England anymore. You asked the wrong person. Uh, I asked a tactful man. A yeah. tactful man. <laughs> well, it's true. Old. He used to be a diplomat. He was. He was the ambassador to Nigeria. Yeah, that's him. How yeah. did you know? <laughs> you name a foreign and you'll be a foreign in London. Yes. It, it, it's not London anymore. Are you ready for the future of the West? <laughs>